Welcome back to our ongoing discussion about Jesus. Is he God? In our last video, we saw the disciples bowing in worship before the risen Jesus. And then he declared, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. In other words, he claimed for himself the same sovereignty that is reserved for the God of the Old Testament. That's how the first book of the New Testament ends. Today we're going to look at a heavenly scene in the last book of the New Testament. Hi, I'm Fred Von Comica, and this is another episode of the Blue Ridge Bible Talks. Welcome to my backyard. The Bible and Christianity provide the script, and the Blue Ridge Mountains usually provide the setting. Today we're at a place called Jump Off Rock, and as you can guess from its name, it probably has a bit of a tragic history just one of many tragedies that cover this entire world. Now the heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he came to this world and he died for it. He rose again and now he is seated at God's right hand, ruling all heaven and earth. And he offers forgiveness of sins and a new life to all who will place their trust in him. Now this is why Jesus is worthy of worship. Now the scene in Matthew 28 included some doubters, but the years of the events that immediately followed removed all doubts from them. We see it in the writings of the New Testament. They claim with one voice that Jesus is exalted, worthy of the same honor due to his Father. Today we're gonna to look at the book of Revelation. In chapters four and five, we see a vision of the heavenly throne room. Now the Apostle John hears a voice that calls him up to the throne and he sees the one seated upon it, radiant, glorious, thunderous. And before him are four living creatures and 20 elders on thrones and the burning presence of the Holy Spirit. The creatures cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and who is, and who is to come. And the elders join in worship, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. Now this is what you'd expect. The inhabitants of heaven worship God. So far, so good. Now on to chapter 5. The one on the throne is holding a scroll, and it apparently has the destiny of planet Earth written upon it. But who is worthy to open it? The four creatures? The elders? How about some angels? Maybe people, those in heaven, those on the earth, those under the earth. Nope, no takers, and tears drench the robes of the apostle. But then one of the elders says, cheer up the descendant of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has conquered. And then John turns and he looks, but he sees a lamb, a lamb as though it had been slain and it's standing before the throne. For all the mysterious imagery, it is clear that John sees the risen Jesus who died for the sins of all mankind and who purchased for God a people of his own. I mentioned in episode three, Jesus as the son of man, that Stephen's murder was the first time we see Jesus standing in the heavenly throne room. Every other mention has him seated at God's right hand. Revelation five is the second time that we see Jesus standing by the throne. We're not told why, but we do know that when the elders and the living creatures turn, they worship Jesus. And they sang to him a new song. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Yes, the heavenly choir sings to Jesus. Isn't this worship in its purest form? Then, untold thousands upon thousands of angels join in. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive 
power and wealth and wisdom and might and glory and blessing. Did you notice the smooth transition from the worship of the one on the throne, that would be the father, to the lamb standing before it, that would be the son, using many of the same terms. God the Father is worthy to receive glory and honor and power. And then Jesus the Lamb is worthy to receive power and glory and honor and much else. Now, does Jesus rob all the attention? Is God miffed? Are the worshipers in heaven playing one off of the other? No. The scene draws to a close. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them. That doesn't leave anybody out. They're all saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Do not miss this. To him who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And the four living creatures cry, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Now, in case you missed it, we see the inhabitants of heaven take the same posture and say the same things to God our Father and to Jesus, his Son. And John calls it worship. Does any of this matter? If the Jesus you believe in isn't worthy of the same glory and honor and worship and praise due to the Father, then you've gotten a hold of a different Jesus, not the one in the Bible. Not only does Jesus share in God's glory, but we're going to see he also shares his own personal name, the one we find in the Old Testament, Yahweh. We'll deal with this in an upcoming video. Stand by for a ride.